nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break this. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. That's a pretty big pair of table back there. Yeah, yeah. P to the T twenty. Hey, hey! You can't say the year. This is this video is timeless. Okay. I can't say the year at all. Start again. Okay. Yeah, yeah, P to the T, 20 you know how we is <laughs> Periodic table, key concept one. Although the original periodic table, proposed by Mendeleev, arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic mass, the elements on the modern periodic table are arranged in order of increasing atomic number. We consider Mendeleev to be the father of the modern periodic table. However, he arranged the elements on his table in order of increasing atomic mass. On the modern periodic table, we arrange elements by increasing atomic number. Periodic table key concept two. Elements can be classified as metals on the left, metalloids on the staircase, watch out for polonium, and non-metals on the right. Now, as you can see in our example, the elements that are considered metals are in blue, the elements on the staircase are in green, and the non-metals, including hydrogen, are in yellow. Periodic table key concept three. Properties of metals include one, two, or three valence electrons, luster, which means shiny, malleability, which means shapeable, and ductility, which means stretchable. Metals are also solids at STP, except mercury, which is a liquid, and they are good conductors of heat and electricity. It's not too hard to remember the different properties of metals because we can think about metals we've seen from our everyday lives. For example, steel is made primarily of iron and it's used for many different structures because it's so malleable or bendable. It's also very shiny as you've seen steel appear before. Copper is used for wiring. It's used for wiring because it can be drawn into wires easily because of its ductility and also it's a very good conductor of electricity. Periodic table key concept four. Properties of nonmetals include five, six, seven, or eight valence electrons. They're dull and brittle. They tend to break into pieces. They're also poor conductors of heat and electricity. Now, unlike metals, non-metals can be thought of as just the opposite in all their properties. So they can be solids, liquids, or gases at STP. They tend to be dull. They also are not good conductors of heat and electricity. They're also brittle. They're not malleable and ductile. They break into pieces. So in our example here, you can see sulfur, which happens to be a solid here. And it's brittle, as you can see, because it's broken into many pieces. Periodic table, key concept five. The horizontal rows of the periodic table are called periods, and the vertical columns are called groups or families. Just to reiterate, rows run horizontally and are called periods. Columns run vertically and are called groups or families. Both are labeled directly on your periodic tables. Periodic table, key concept six. Members of the same group have the same number of valence electrons and therefore have similar chemical properties. Now remember, valence electrons can be found in the outermost shell for those elements. Since valence electrons are the electrons that participate in chemical reactions, members of the same group will react in similar ways. For example, members of group one, the alkali metals, all have one valence electron, so they'll all lose one valence electron. Periodic table key concept seven. Special names are assigned to members of certain groups. Group one, alkali metals. Thanks for spoiling that one on the last slide. Group two, alkaline earth metals. Groups three through 12, transition metals. Group 17, halogens. Group 18, noble gases. 
So let's start over to the left on our periodic table. Groups one and two, the alkali and alkaline earth metals, tend to lose electrons very easily, so they're very reactive metals. The transition metals from groups three through 12, these ones have multiple oxidation states and they have colored ions in solutions. Halogens, group 17, these are very reactive non-metals. They tend to gain electrons easily. This is why they are oftentimes found as diatomic molecules. Finally, we have the noble gases in group 18. These have full outermost shells of electrons, and so they are not reactive. They are instead very stable. Periodic table, key concept eight. Atomic radius decreases from left to right across a period and increases from top to bottom within a group. Now when you think about atomic radius going from left to right across a period, we are not filling in any additional shells. We are simply adding one more proton to each successive element within that period, increasing its nuclear charge. The effect that has is it pulls those electrons in with a greater nuclear charge, hence a smaller radius. Now up and down in a group, it's easier to see the trend because we gain one more principal energy level electron shell as we go down that group. Periodic table, key concept nine. Generally, first ionization energy increases left to right across a period and decreases top to bottom within a group. The first ionization energy is the energy required to remove the most loosely held electron. That electron would be a valence electron. Across a period, as Mr. Fu already explained, there's an increase in attractions between the nucleus and those outermost electrons. This is due to an increase in nuclear charge or number of protons. Because there are greater attractions across the period, it's gonna take a lot of energy to remove that electron. It's really hard. Ugh, I gotta add a lot of energy to remove that strongly attracted electron. Down a group, we have more energy levels, as Mr. Fu already explained. And so those electrons that are farther away from the nucleus, they are weakly attracted to the nucleus. They're a lot easier to remove. So I don't have to add as much energy to remove those electrons. I can just go, boop, and they'll pop right off. Periodic table, key concept 10. Electronegativity increases left to right across a period and decreases from top to bottom within a group. Now electronegativity is defined as the ability to attract electrons. Now going across a period, we get more protons with each successive element and a greater nuclear charge. Therefore, the attraction increases going from left to right. Now going top to bottom in a group, you have more PELs or more shells, so that distance from the nucleus to the outermost shell is greater, which means the attraction is less. Periodic table key concept 11. Metallic characteristics tend to decrease from left to right across a period and increase from top to bottom within a group. Metals tend to lose electrons due to their weak attractions. The metal with the weakest attractions is found in the bottom left of the periodic table. It's francium. Now nonmetals tend to gain electrons due to their strong attractions. So the most active nonmetal is found in the upper right hand corner of the periodic table. Now, noble gases are out because they're stable. They don't gain electrons. So the most active nonmetal is fluorine. Periodic table, key concept 12. Comparisons of properties may be found by consulting reference table S. Now guys, you have more than 40 minutes for this. This is not a unit test. You have three hours for this exam. So if you forget all the trends we just discussed in this video, you can look up the values on table S. You have plenty of time. Now, in addition to the trends we just spoke about in this video, you also have values for melting point, boiling point, and density. Say yes to table S. Periodic table key concept 13. Some elements exist in two or more forms in the same phase. These forms are called allotropes. Oxygen, O2 gas, and ozone, O3 gas, are examples of allotropes. Allotropes have different structures, which leads to different properties. So even though they're made up of the same atom, so they're the same element really, they're gonna have very different physical and chemical properties. Diatomic oxygen, O2 for example, is what we breathe. Ozone though, O3, would be poisonous to us. 
Other common allotropes include graphite and diamond, which are both made up of carbon, but again, they have very different properties. But we never off, or we zone to the brick of dawn. A C I E N C E in the hall, they call S Wing. You know we never wear a tie. Like my homies, boys, two men, it's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and a. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and a. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.